Hey, welcome back, knife nerds and everyday care people. <clears throat> it's your boy, the Big Canucker here, and uh, we are going to look at a knife that I have anxiously waited to arrive, and it has been on my, uh, I don't know if you say it was my grail, because I didn't really know about it until, I mean, it's been out for a couple years or so, but and when I saw it, I definitely wanted it, and uh, I saw that it was on sale at uh, Warriors and Wonders out at uh, BC, and uh, I was talking to another knife guy who was telling me that things are going to start going up another 15 or 20 percent here in Canada due to some sort of tariffs and stuff like that. And I thought, well, it's damn expensive, but uh, I'll probably pull the trigger on it. And it is something I am not sorry I did whatsoever. It is the Andrew Demko designed 8015 by Cold Steel. And I got to say, man, oh man, I think I've got myself a brand new favorite hard use folder. I love this knife and I am so happy despite some obviously some glaring flaws on this knife that I like having this in my pocket it is a wonderful wonderful hunk of steel and believe me when I say it's a hunk of steel this is uh this is a big solid well-built elegantly designed uh folding knife that can skin a rhinoceros or cut up an apple so Let's uh, go to the tabletop and let's have a look at this bugger. All right. So like we said, it is uh, the Andrew Demko designed 8015. And uh, now Andrew Demko uh, has been a designer for Cold Steel for quite some time. He is the designer of their most famous lock, the uh, Triad lock. And now this particular one here is actually called the Scorpion lock, which is one of the reasons I decided to get this is because it was so different. Now, I am a huge Spyderco guy. I mean, you know, and I've got liner locks, frame locks, compression locks, axis locks, ball bearing locks, and I just wanted something a little bit new, and I decided to give this a try, and boy, oh boy, I am not uh, sorry that I did. This bugger here is really actually quite, uh, quite fidget friendly for being such a big honking piece of steel. And you can see right now, I've got it as it's drop shut by just simply, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but my damn dogs are going bananas outside. And uh, does anybody want a Jack Russell Chihuahua and a Bichon Shih Tzu cross? Because I've got two dogs here that can say goodbye. And I better not, my wife would be <laughs> heartbroken. And we've had these dogs for a lot of years. I'd be heartbroken too. Anyways, let's get back to the old uh, knife, uh, knife uh, look here. All right, so now, have you look at uh, Cold Steel's uh, uh, page on this? Uh, they talk about it being uh, the most comfortable sub user friendly sub four inch tactical folder we've ever made, and I gotta say it, they are not wrong. This is a really really comfortable knife, despite um, the fact that everything here is so the way it's been machined. It is extremely uh, the edges are so sharp and even though they are sharp i did uh break down some cardboard with this and uh besides this jimping on the top of the blade which is horrible uh, they it was uh really really quite comfortable and i didn't notice like a whole like a like a like a clip hot spot or you know a certain spot in the knife that really bothered me it just seemed like everything this knife needs to have all the pieces maybe tumbled a little bit and have those edges broken up a, a little bit. And I would say that that is something that would uh, make this knife an absolute home run. It's, it's pretty damn close to being a home run. Now, if you have a look at this particular thing here, let's go through the uh, the, the um, stats here real quick. It is a three and a half inch long blade. The entire thing is eight and a half inches. And let's give you an idea. Let's put it right next to the old Delica here and you can see that it dwarfs the Delica and of course we've got another new knife to the channel that I'll be reviewing down the road which is the Osborne 940 and you can see now this Osborne 940 happened to be a grail knife of mine and uh, you can see that it uh, it dwarfs the uh, 940 and the 940 is a you know, it, it, I'm not going to say it's a super large knife or anything like that, but it was an EDC staple for many, many years. And you can see here, blade-wise, it's very, very close to the uh, three and a half inch. But, you know, of course, you've got so such a big honking amount of steel on this uh, 8015. So, uh, width-wise, 3.8 millimeters. 
and you can see that it's got that tip here that's really really I mean it, it's widened right the tip to give you some extra strength it's got kind of a false edge uh, milled inside here it is a high saber ground uh, not quite a fully flat ground blade but pretty darn close and it's of course it's got a couple of great big huge uh, thumb studs that are quite comfortable um, once you kind of see these are really really sharp uh, pretty much the whole knife is sharp the jipping on here uh, is sharp these thumb studs were sharp the corners of this uh, 60 61 uh, aluminum uh, part of the lock here was sharp and, and of course this here too as well this g10 that is a huge knock on this knife. This G10 is so aggressive that it will crush, you know, any sort of jeans in a matter of hours. You know, in and out of this pocket half a dozen times and you're already going to start losing some threads. So what I ended up doing is I took this clip off and I sanded this down quite a bit. I didn't sand it down completely flat. That is something I think I'm going to look at in the future. But I sanded it down where it broke up this G10 a lot and it still is i still have to be careful going in and out of some of my jeans especially the ones that i've got that are a little bit uh threadbare uh this will pull them apart in no time but I, I just love carrying this knife so much that i'm able to look past that now it's a 6.5 ounce beast of a knife and but it does not carry like six and a half ounces i mean i have had some knives that were close to seven ounces or seven uh, uh ounces and they carried heavy and it, you know what this seems to carry a whole lot lighter than a six and a half ounce uh, blade now the uh, blade itself is s35 vn which is a great steel absolutely fantastic now the s35 vn was designed by it was s30 steel with some added components in there uh chris reeves wanted to make this steel a little bit easier to machine and give it a little bit more edge holding ability as well as some toughness and uh, the s35vn is basically an improved version of the s30v made by uh crucible particle metallurgy now they used to have cts xhp in their folders which is a great steel the edge holding ability on that steel the toughness on that steel is phenomenal but they were having a hard time getting it in bulk, so they switched to something that was a lot easier to get, which is the S35VN. Now, your handle material here is you've got some titanium liners with a... Uh, no, you know what? I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that's titanium liners or not. I think they are with a, a G10. Let me have a quick look here. Hello. Uh, steel liners. I apologize. So they are st stainless steel steel liners with a G10 and a 6061 aluminum backspacer here, uh, or kind of a back, I don't even know what you call that. It basically, it's kind of a, it's part of the scorpion lock. And um, so how this scorpion lock works, of course, is inside this part of the handle, there happens to be a little slot here with a spring in it. And of course, there's a pivot that comes off the springs inside there. And so now when this lifts up like that, like so, you can see it lifts up, it compresses that spring. And inside the back of this uh, knife, there's a little slot where this pin basically drops through. And so that's your detent too as well. As you can see inside there, this little bit of a ramp is your detent. So as you lift it up, you can see that it starts to, to lift up, slowly opens, then it drops inside that little slot and uh, Bob's your uncle, it's locked in. Now, it has the added benefit is if you happen to be holding this knife and gripping it, you're actually forcing that little bar inside that, uh, that little bit of a, a space there even more. So there's no way that this is gonna fail or come loose, especially if you've got this on your, on your, uh, in your hand, close fisted. Now, this knife here, did not come uh, drop shut. It actually came with this pivot so tight that I thought something was broken. I ended up taking this knife and the first thing I want to do is grab it and see if I can flip it open like that. And I tore a piece of my thumb here uh, because it was locked down so tight that this blade was not, I had a hard time pulling it out with two hands. So I looped it up. I loosened the pivot a little bit. And, and then after that, it was all right. And it's still... 
Um, as you can see, it's still fairly sharp, and you can see that it is still kind of pulling away at my thumb because that's the way I like to open up thumb studs is by pressing into it like that. And I am a fidget guy, and uh, so it is wearing on my thumbnail. Now, because it is so nice, drop shutty, if you open up this back, I don't know what you call this, this, uh, this back spacer, I guess, or back billet. Uh, when you pull it open and you you get it past your detent, it does fall. It is free fall shut. So you can just, you know, open it up, flick it open, let it go. And you don't even have to use the thumb studs at all. So uh, uh, I can do it like that. <laughs> but if you get your fingers too inside there, you do have to be careful because you can see that the the blade does travel almost to this back here and if your fingers are in there i know that you can cut yourself because I, I did hit my nail a few times so now because i've had this knife for quite some time now uh i know how to instinctively put my fingers i'm not worried about this thing getting uh too cut now now the pocket clip is not a deep carry pocket clip but it is an ambidextrous left or right and it does give you the uh um the lanyard hole, which I absolutely love, uh, especially on a big knife. Having that lanyard, I love pulling that knife uh, with my finger, with my picky finger, uh, pulling it out. Now, I have got, let's just say, I'm probably uh, XL or double XL size large hands. And so this big beefy folder, my hands fit in there perfectly. Um, now, a lot of people here worry about these little spaces there. If you're fingers are smaller or your fingers are fatter and stuff that can become a hot spot but with mine it seems to fit absolutely perfectly and i love the feel of this knife it cuts like a beast too as well well this high saber ground even though you're looking at you know almost four millimeters thick you'd think that it would be maybe bind up that this high saber ground does a fantastic job now out of the factory the fit and finish was perfect it was you know centered beautifully it was sharpened even on both sides but not super sharp um i, I think that maybe cold steel guys could take a little bit of uh, a course on sharpening from the spider co guys especially the guys who sharpen that uh, spider co sage um and because uh, i think both them, both knives are made in taiwan this is a taiwanese made knife so for those of you who um uh, you know like the american made stuff well I don't know, look past it, this knife is worth it. Uh, the fit and finish was excellent. The materials they used were excellent. The design was excellent, despite a few flaws. And this knife here was modeled after uh, the Andrew, Andrew Demko, um, I'm gonna say custom, and there's also kind of a uh, mid uh, two as well, uh, costing quite a bit more money. So this here is, I think you're running, uh, let's just see if it says here, 269 American. That's the MSRP uh, price. I think the street price is, is uh, in the States is, you know, high, you know, 190 ish, I do believe. In in Canada, it's I got this for 249 So um, I think I did well. A lot of people have this knife here, out, you know, in Canada, 275 279 I've even seen that 299 So I think I did well at 249 but uh, it's definitely something I think you want to put inside your pocket. Now, um, <clears throat> the Andrew Demko custom version of this can cost up to $1,400. And I mean, there is some differences, of course. I, I'm not sure with the steel that Andrew Demko uses in his custom models, but this here is actually titanium and your spacers are titanium too as well. And other than that, you could set them side by side and the lines are so, so very similar. Uh, I mean, you're getting the design, you know, a $1,500 knife design in a $200 package. And I don't know if you've paid, you know, because there are uh, kind of uh, semi-production versions of the Andrew Demko custom that, you know, $7, $800. And if you paid, you know, $1,000 for an Andrew Demko knife and you have that in your pocket and you take this off a table and put it in your pocket and in the dark, I don't even know how much you can tell the difference. And, you know, that might kind of piss me off if I had spent a $1,000 on an Andrew Demko Custom, where you could have spent, uh, you know, $800 left and get a knife that is just as nice, in my opinion. Now, uh, this, you know, on a, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably give this knife an 8. Uh, 
it is so close to being a 10 if they just did a few things. Uh, one of them is to fix the sharp spots and the jimping on, on this knife. I mean, it's it's painful. Like this jimping is so darn sharp. I took a little bit of a file and I kind of filed it down there just a smidge and some sandpaper. I, I do have to do it some more. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dye this too as well. I'm not a super fan of this OD green. There was a black version available. And on the Andrew Demko Customs, there's all sorts of different colors. And so I'm going to actually pull this knife completely apart. I'm going to sand the entire thing. And I'm going to get rid of all these super, uh, really, really uh, sharp edges and this jimping. I'm going to sand that down completely flat too as well. And then I think this knife will be a 10. It is a wonderful, wonderfully designed uh, piece of steel. And it's something that if you can afford it, you definitely should put in your collection. I like this knife a lot. So huh, that's what I got to say about the old 8015. If you've uh, liked what you saw, don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe. I appreciate it so much, you guys. Now. We are not out of the woods yet, so please, please stay safe out there. Listen to the experts. Keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the Big Canucker saying adios.